So we're going to look at the sign rule. The sign rule is something we've done before, so this should just be a revision for you. During this video, please take notes. Listen again if you need to. Take the opportunity to rewind. There will be places where I ask you to pause and complete an activity. Make sure you're focused and not around any distractions. The sign rule. So we use sign rule for non-right angle triangles. It can be applied to a right angle triangle, but we should be using trigonometry at Sokar Tower for right angle triangles. There are two ways we can use the sign rule. We can use it to work out lengths and we can use it to work out angles. Lengths are represented by lowercase letters and angles are represented by these uppercase letters. The one you're trying to calculate needs to be on the top of the formula. So this formula at the top has a lowercase length on top, so it's used to work out missing lengths. This one has the uppercase letters on top, so it's used to work out missing angles. We only need to use two parts of the formula, which means when we're applying the sign rule, we're looking for situations where we have two pairs. When I mean a pair, we've got an angle with the opposite length and another angle with the other opposite length. I'd like you to look at these triangles and decide in which situations can we apply the sign rule. Some of these we can apply the sign rule to, but some of them we can't. I'd like you to pause the video, decide which ones we could apply the sign rule to and press play when you're ready, please. Okay, let's have a look then. We could apply the sign rule to this triangle. We could work out the length P by pairing it with 32, as we have a pair of 21 and an angle of 91. We could apply the sign rule to this triangle. We've got a matching pair of a length 41 with an angle 92, and we could pair up our 28 with the angle B. And lastly, we have this triangle. We've got a matching pair between the 3.6 and the B and a matching pair between the 5.1 and the 100. We're going to look at an example of how we could use the sign rule to work out a missing length. First of all, we notice we can use the sign rule because we've got the 11 matches up with the 30 and the 13 matches up with the X. So we're trying to work out an angle, which means we need to use the rule where the angles are on top. First bit is substitution, replace the formula parts with the parts we know. We know sine B is represented by 30 and it's over B, which is actually 11. And sine A is the one we're trying to work out, X, and it's over 13. We've then got to rearrange the formula. We're trying to work out sine A, we need to leave that on itself, so this divide by 13 needs to go to the opposite side. The inverse operation for divide by 13 is to multiply by 13. Just like when we use Sokartoa, when we're trying to do the inverse of sine, we need to do sine minus 1. We're trying to leave A on itself, so we do sine minus 1 of this in our calculator. It gives us the angle x. So that's that example finished. This one then, slightly more complicated. At first glance, Notice this 12.6 doesn't actually match up to an angle. So for us to work out x, we've got a pair, but nothing to pair the 12.6 to. This is a common type of question in an exam. They expect you to remember the angles in a triangle had up to 180, which means we can take away the 50 and the 71 to work out this missing angle. We've now got everything we need to apply the sign rule to work out x, and then apply the sign rule again to work out y. I'm going to start with x. We're trying to work out a length, so I've got the lengths and lowercase on top. I've got b is over sine 71, and 12.6 is over sine 59. We're trying to work out b, so I need to rearrange by multiplying by sine 71. Type in this in your calculator, gets your answer straight away as 13.9 centimetres. Please remember your units. Right, same process, this time the aim of the game is to work out y. We're trying to work out length, so I want the lengths on top. I need to leave C on itself, so I need to multiply up by sine 50. Type in this in your calculator. It gives you a length Y as 11.3 centimetres. Notice it does ask for three significant figures, and in an exam, worth an extra mark to get your rounding correct. I'd now like you to please have a go at these four questions. 
Please pause the video, have a go and then press play to check your answers when you're ready. And here we go with the answers. So answers are here. Notice the bottom two were where you had to use angles in a triangle property to work out that third angle. Same process, I'd like you to have a go at working out these missing angles. Because you're working out an angle, you should have straight away remembered that you're going to be using the inverse sine minus one to finish off your working out. Have a go at all four. Press play when you're ready to check your answers. Let's check those answers. There we go. Hopefully you've gotten on okay with those. Now, in an exam, they may give you a straightforward triangle, just like the ones you've just attempted, or they may give you a worded question. So we've got the angle of elevation of the top of a building from a point A is 25 degrees. A point D, which is 15 meters close to the building, the angle of elevation is 35. We need to calculate the height of the building. First of all, let's add to that diagram the information that we've been given from the word. We know the angle of elevation from A is 25 and the angle of elevation from D is 35. Aim of the game is to work out this missing height of the building. So we have a length of 15. It tells us that D is 15 metres closer to the building. Notice we now have a non-right angle triangle formed. We can't yet apply the sine rule to that triangle. We've got the 25 matches up with a length we don't know. And that's all we have within that. But we can use some other angle properties. So first of all, we could work out the angle TDA because we know angles on a straight line add up to 180. Therefore, this angle here becomes 145 degrees. Still, we can't apply the sine rule straight away because the 145 degrees goes to this length we don't know and the 25 goes to this length we don't know but we need to know. But we now know two angles in a triangle which means we can work out the third. So if we subtract those two from 180 it leaves us 10 degrees. We now have all three angles and we have the 15 so we've got our pairs. We've got the 10 and the 15 and the 25 with this length that we need to work out. So we're trying to work out TD. It's a length, so we put the length on top. We rearrange to work out TD, multiply it by sine 25, and type on your calculator, it gives you the length of this diagonal at 36.5 meters. We now have a right angled triangle. We're trying to work out the height. So when right angle triangles are applied, we're going to use Socartoa. We have the hypotenuse and we're trying to work out the opposite because we know this 35. So if we have the H and the O, we're going to use So again. Applying that to Socartoa, we have sin 35 would be the same as TB over 36.5. We need to rearrange the the game to work out TB. So multiplying up by 36.5 means the height of the building is 20.9 metres. Thank you very much. And I'd like you now to please to go to Teams and have a go at the worksheet provided.